right, hello there, everybody, and welcome to Roll With Advantage. It is so great to be back after a hiatus. Hopefully this week and next week, well, actually, of course, uh, this week we definitely will have a Salamander Coast. We're here now, uh, and we will have Isles of Avery on this Saturday. Uh, just as a heads up for the future, though, the uh, week of the 11th and the 18th of November, there will definitely be no streams there just because my wife and I have our shows going up then. Uh, Eurydice and the Crucible. So that'll be a fun time for us. Uh, but we're here to play D&D. We're living in the now. We're living in the moment. I'm excited for this session. So let's roll the intro and have him. So with that, we're going to go ahead and dive into tonight's, to tonight's session. Um, so as is tradition here on World Advantage, I don't do the summary. I have my players do the summary. So this week on summary is... Me. Mark. All right. Ooh. Mark, Ooh. whenever you're ready. All right. Take it away. So last we left off, book six had just ended. Uh, we are about traveling through the Old Kingdom, meeting tons of factions, learning more about Bianca's history, and things ultimately come to a head when Issen launches a siege on the town of Periton, and the team launches into a hasty attempt to forge alliances in the fractured city, enough for people to be willing to defend it together um, before the invasion, and then they are in a lot of battles. Um... Natalia, Bianca's mother, died in one. Kiyothi, the party's favorite Goliath cleric, died in another. Um, and with those two gone, and particularly Kiyothi gone, there was nobody in the vicinity who could do uh, much in the way of resurrection magic. But the good news is that though it was in ruins and many, many people died and many thousands and thousands of pieces of gold worth of property damage were done, and there were now many people homeless and hungry and in the elements. The town was saved, and Bianca did manage to defeat Issen. Her appearance changed um, as she stepped out of the tower, and it reflected that her ties with Issen had been severed and her bond with the Raven Queen had grown stronger as she was beginning to embrace her new identity as Queen Damaris. But now we enter Book 7. There's still the other half of the Old Kingdom to go through. There are still all of these trepidatious alliances we have, and all of these other clans and cults that we have pissed off along the way, and members of the Thirteen that we know are out there somewhere. And ultimately, Bianca's grandmother, the spirit of her at least, is still... Uh, in the keep that needs to be liberated before Bianca can truly be queen. So that brings us to Book 7, Chapter 1. We're in the wake of the battle, and the party the next day, um, or the next several days, I believe we rested for a while, um, but the party gets to aiding the city as best they could right away. Um, Carousilla goes out and lifts some spirits. Suni gets out there and repairs some nature. Ajax gets it there and clears some rubble. Cecily gets out there and talks to some children, and they're all kind of playing to their strength, trying to lift up the morale of this place and help where they can. Bianca alternatively spends her morning with her father in the temple, and they reminisce on the fallen Natalia, and uh, they talk about how it might be best to leave her soul at peace, uh, no matter how hard that would be to do. There is a chance that Bianca can use her connection with the Raven Queen to talk to Natalia at some point from beyond the grave and offer her some kind of rest, but they decided not to do that for now. Bianca stayed with her mother's corpse uh, in the temple and wept alone, the first chance she really had to let everything out. 
But after that, she got right into queen mode and started uh, getting down to business, not wanting to show any of that vulnerability or uh, lack of sure footing to the rest of the party in this very tumultuous time. So in the evening, she kind of takes the reins, goes around and has conversations with a lot of members of the party, checking in on people, asking how they're doing, um, and offering them positions in what will eventually be her kingdom and her cabinet. Um, she also receives several tasks from Victor the Investor uh, that could help uh, in the coming days. And with Cecily, she attempts to cast Balefire on Issen's trapped soul in the lantern, but the lantern somehow preserved it. And she would need to consult the Raven Queen to truly learn how to dispose of that soul in due time. That night, the party is negotiating on what to do next. They agree that it would be proper to hold some sort of funeral for Kyothi soon and to host an event for the town to boost morale in some way uh, later in the week. Cecily heads out again for the evening. She's going to use her storm powers to keep people dry as it rains throughout the night and sleep on the streets with them. Ajax head out as well. Um, Bianca stopped him on the way out, noticing that something was clearly burdening him that he was not talking about, but he did not quite open up in that moment. And once he found a spot in the city he could be alone, Ajax said a prayer to Pelor and to Leos, asking them why he had to go through everything he's gone through, why his party had to go everything they've gone through. And he let out a heartbroken scream. And Cecily, being outside with the others, was able to hear this. She calmed the other townspeople around her, assuring them that it was just the cry of a suffering uh, person on their side, not another ambush. And she rushed to Ajax from down the street to see what she could do to remedy the situation. And that is where the two of them have been standing for about 28 days. The end. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So that is exactly where we're going to go ahead and pick up um, as we... There we go. Oh, wow. Okay. Off to a great start. <laughs> there you go. Okay. As we now uh, cut to the city of Periton late at night as the rain falls, Cecily, you had heard throughout the narrow buildings that yet still stand within Periton an echoing roar, a pained yell of a voice that you very clearly recognize. It was only one brief roar, and you only have a vague idea of which direction it came from. The rain cascading down makes it hard to interpret which way exactly, but you know that it was Ajax. So it's up to you if you'd like to take the time to pursue it, or if you'd prefer to leave Ajax be. She is definitely pursuing. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so go ahead and um, let's say make an investigation check with advantage as you're just trying to go alleyway to alleyway and night in the rain. Um, Hell yeah. Trying your Dice. best to do that, yeah. Uh, we got an eight, and then we got a three. So much for knowing these streets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Damn. Um, eight, so, um, I guess it just depends. Ajax, you had said that you had sort of fallen down on your knees, and that you had sort of tilted your head up and, and roared. Um, how long would you stay there for? Um... Is there, does, okay, I guess after 10 or so minutes, has anyone started walking into the area? 10 or so minutes? Yeah, right at like minute nine or 10, right when you're about to do something, you do see a uh, 
small form begin to kind of wrap around the corner. Um, and you can see the sort of rain shield above her as you do see Cecily has just kind of stumbled on where you're at. You can see that as she looks down the alleyway where you're at, you see her, but you're not quite sure if she sees you. Is there a bunch of rubble? A bunch around? of rubble? Um, or is there any rubble around me? In this area, I'd say a little bit. There's no collapsed buildings or anything like that. Uh, just sort of debris that it had been knocked into the street, broken carriages, things like that. Okay, so you see Cecily. Uh, he's going to like briefly look over and just like wipe his face, and then kind of get up and start picking up rubble and placing it as though nothing is wrong, and he's just doing things around. Okay. Um. So Cecily, as you sort of look down this alleyway, I'll have you make a perception check to see if you notice Ajax or hear him. Moving the rubble. More dice. Hell yeah, dice. Hey, that was an 11. We're in the double digits, baby. 11, okay. I would say you don't see Ajax, but you do hear the sound of rubble rolling and cracking and moving. Okay, she'll kind of be peering a little bit. Um, she's definitely grown a little bit anxious in this searching period. Um, wonder, you know, wondering if it was not just a cry of anguish, but a cry of danger of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, but she'll kind of can, somewhat hastily make her way over. Uh, can Ajax still see Cecily even though she can't see him? Um, <clears throat> in this current moment, um... As she pursues going down this way, I'd say there's maybe a few moments, but she'll see you shortly. I mean, you're a white lion. Um, yeah, I was just trying to see if uh, Ajax can, like, tell that Cecily has started to, like, walk in, like, a worried way. Or, like, a, you know, like, not sure about what she's walking into kind of way. Um, yeah, you'd be able to see her clear enough. Um, would uh, Ajax see that, Cecily? Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's not, like, ready for, you know, a threat or anything, but she's definitely, mm -hmm. gr has grown concerned after yeah. not finding him right away. I think uh, Ajax, if he notices that in any way, he would just immediately go, um, down here. <sighs> Jeez, dude, there you are. And she'll, <laughs> she'll, in her own way, play off like she wasn't worried either. <laughs> Just <sighs> can uh, looking for you. Oh, um, everything okay? You're asking me. Uh, you seemed a little. Yes. Ajax. Before I even saw your face, I heard what. Your roar sounded like. <laughs> okay, I, I know that was you. Yes, I was uh, moving some of this rubble, and it fell on <laughs> my foot. Is your foot okay? Looks down at his foot. Fine. Hmm. Looks um. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Yes, uh, fortunately, I didn't chip any of my uh, toenails or anything. <laughs> just kind of just squint at him. Claws? No, that's his hands. <laughs> Ajax. I know we both want to keep contributing, but I'm going to sleep. Are you planning on sleeping tonight? Um, yeah. Mm, just wanted to... I still have a lot of energy, so just thought I'd keep helping. Hmm. 
Did you really come searching for me? Yeah. You know, the last two times I heard that, you were in the middle of almost dying. <laughs> Thank you. I'm... I'm fine. All right. Well, I'm going to stay here. And she will lean against the wall and put Ajax in the in the 20-foot uh, bubble oh. with her. And just <clears throat> oh, kind, of, right. kind of have her arms crossed. Well, that is, that's actually pretty nice. Um, he's just going to start picking up rubble, even though he wasn't before. <laughs> he's just going to act like he was doing it this whole time yep. and start putting things in a pile. She'll just be kind of observing the whole pantomime. Just like she, she doesn't know you're lying for certain, but she's kind of just like, hmm. <laughs> Um, but um, she'll, she'll just kind of stay looking. Uh, why are you out, outside? Figured I'd give the new homeless people some cover from the rain. Where is everyone else? Sleeping, as far as I know. They, yeah, they, uh, they all deserve rest. And you don't? Like I said, <laughs> I'm, I have a little bit of energy left, so might as well use it. You having trouble sleeping? You know... It would be a lot like me to pretend that all those things just didn't happen. Just move on. Keep fighting the good fight. But I gotta be honest, Ajax, if you're trying to do the whole swallow it down and move on like nothing happened thing, you're not quite nailing it. That bad, huh? I... I've been down that road. <sighs> I don't know what to say. You know... When I first got these powers I have, they were dangerous. They still are, obviously. I mean, you've seen it, but... Well, in a good way. Right. But back then, I didn't know how to control it. I didn't know what I was doing. They would just show up. They still do sometimes. Out of the blue, I just... Something else comes up. And I spent a long time wishing that one of these days the weave would teach me how to help someone. Healing, like Suni or, or Carasilla or medicine, like Bianca. Nothing. 
and just kept getting better and better. And death. It's kind of a burden sometimes. It is. The, the point is... I don't know... If you carry around that guilt sometimes too, but... I want you to know you did your part. It's not your fault that the gods didn't tell you how to bring Natalia back. You did what you were supposed to do. Shit just you're, happens. Here lately, it doesn't feel like the gods are telling me to do anything. I appreciate you seeking me out and giving me this wisdom. And to answer your question, yes, I do carry around that burden every day. This one just hurt a lot more. if honestly if being alone would actually be helpful right now or if you're going to go back to dropping rocks on your foot <laughs> no I think one rock dropped on my foot was enough <laughs> don't know most of the time, I don't have anyone to converse with, to talk about these things with, though normally I handle them alone. It is yes. odd to have people to talk to. You know, you're supposed to be the grown-up and you sound like me half a year ago. <laughs> it... It does seem easier. Actually, it is easier. Really, it's, it's more about deciding whether or not it's worth it to do the hard thing. Yeah. I could have gone the rest of my life never telling anyone things that had happened to me. Now I first memories in a dumpster, how I ran away from home, and by the time I came back, my adoptive mom had passed away. 
how my third attempt at a mother I accidentally shocked to death and then went on the run. It really would have been easier to not tell anybody. If you don't mind me asking, what made you want to? Well, that's the thing, Ajax. I died. I hope you don't have that big of a moment. <laughs> there were some little things along the way. You know, I... I realized that if I locked up all of the bad memories that there wasn't any room for good ones to get in either. I realized it was simple to be closed and terrifying to be vulnerable. It was worth it. I'm still working on it, but of all the things I was thinking about, in those few minutes where I was slipping in between, I could tell in another realm that Morwen was carrying me somewhere, but in a different realm I was being pulled down somewhere endless I all I could keep thinking about is that that second mom I got was the most important person in my entire life and no one knew her name anymore if I died that was it even if they snooped and opened my locket after I died, just to see what I was hiding that whole time. Her name wasn't in there. That would have been it. In a way, if I didn't open up, I would have been killing her too. So... I tried. Still trying. I don't know if I'll ever talk about everything. I mean, to be honest with you, I probably had somebody's worst moment of their life every fucking week in that orphanage, but... <laughs> I know I'm a kid. But... I have lived twice now, so if you don't mind me giving you some advice. Your advice is wanted. Well, you... um, here's the takeaway. Imagine five seconds from now. You catch a bullet to the neck, and you're done. Think. What do you regret experiencing the most? It's not going to be the things you think. It's probably going to be the fact that you didn't let anybody in. Cecily is, like, sitting down right now, right? I'd imagine she eventually okay. sat on a on a toe-killing boulder. <laughs> he kind of kneels down and gets on, like, one knee and puts the other arm on the other knee that's up. Uh, 
and looks at you and says, You have to be the wisest kid. I know. You should go back to Waterswick and tell that to the headmistress. She'd lose her shit. <laughs> well, if we ever travel there, I'm more than willing to. <laughs> you willing to help clear my name, too? Of course. Now, don't tell me the specifics of why I have to clear your name, but I'll help. Thank you. Sure. Let's head back. If you want to, or I can keep pretending to pick up rocks. It's going to get real cold tonight. It's nothing worse than being cold and damp. I'm going to stay out here with them. It's all right. I promise I've slept in worse. But Do you have any way of contacting us? Joe, do we still have our little uh, message conch shell earring things? Yeah. All right, she'll tap it then. Ajax has one, doesn't he? Yep. Yeah, I remember we broke being... off into our parties, our separate things. Yeah. Uh-huh. So there goes Ajax, Cecily, and Bianca or Carousel is one of those two. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Bianca. It would make more sense for it to be Bianca because Carousel's got message and shit, so. Oh, yeah. Well, that that does the... make yeah, sense. I remember making that call three months ago. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you point to yours, Ajax goes, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, walk me back. Sure. I mean, as much as I can keep myself warm with fur, it's much nicer not to be wet. No, I get it. Shake off if you gotta. I'll just step back real quick. I'm not a dog. I, I, don't, I didn't know how. Sorry. It's okay. I'm just messing with you. But I'm not going to shake off. <laughs> All right, she will. She will join him on the walk back, and then she will indeed uh, go back to the center of town and make a little rain shelter bubble and scooch together some soft things to sleep. Okay. Ajax okay, will head back to the the building walk into the door and is anybody awake or at this point uh it's pretty late that you were out there i i think most people had probably headed to bed by the time you get back to the the building that the uh crown keepers had um yeah. reserved for you uh so it was if he walks in like all the candles are out everyone's asleep he's going to look around make sure cecily's not around and just and shake. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking liar. And then he's going to find a towel and clean up all the water that he just got all over <laughs> the front entrance. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Uh, and then he's just going to go to his room, sit down on his bed, and go to sleep. Okay. Um, is that, oh, okay, yeah, okay, alrighty, so Ajax, you had to sleep, um, and, oh, shit, I didn't mean to do that, <laughs> hate it, don't you hate it when you exit out of a tab on Chrome, and you definitely did not mean to, yeah, you need that tab, Come back. I just, I just did that with Foundry, I, I did it with the most important tab, arguably, Oof. uh, <laughs> um, so, launch please. Um, so yeah, Ajax, you head back inside. And uh, with that, all of you uh, find a peaceful rest. 
And eventually now on the third day, um, as eventually, as eventually the sun does begin to rise that morning, um, the storm has passed. Uh, rain no longer falls on the city of Periton. The ash and blood um, has been washed away, as now on this morning bright and early, people all around the city begin to work. They begin to prepare, and uh, that is not the right one. What's going on here? Long navigation. There you go. There we go. Uh, the people of Periton, they work tirelessly now um, from this point to rebuild and repair, doing what they can with what supplies they have to at least return some semblance of normalcy to their city. There is still a sadness that lingers over the town, that much is sure. But most people, thanks to the efforts of the party, are able to find more cheer and joy in the small things. Finding and reconnecting with loved ones, or finding family members, or good friends. Um... And, um, oh, oh, I just blanked. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, I'm not going to change. Damn, that's fine. Um, oh, okay, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> oh, wow, that was, a, that was an awful thing to forget, uh, nice. too. <laughs> we saved it. We saved it eventually. Um, so as all of you eventually do wake and head into that uh, meeting room uh, that has all of your rooms uh, connected to it, you can see that there is a small breakfast prepared for you, mostly just uh, dried cure meat, cured meats and, um, maybe small rationings of bread and rice, um, things that can be rationed out easily. Um, but you can see a um, man that all of you are familiar with, uh, that being um, Illithor, the Blade Master. Um, you can see that he definitely has a heaviness to him as he enters the room and he begins to speak, or as all of you enter the room and maybe begin to slowly take your seats um, as he says, thank you all for everything you've done once again. I know that it will not make this information any easier to hear, but I want you to know that without you, these numbers would have been worse. With your help and the help of the citizens of Periton, most rubble has been cleared, as well as it can be, and almost all of the fallen have been either identified or discovered. Of the soldiers that had fought, around 6,700 of them died. And of the roughly 9,000 civilians, or sorry, roughly around the 1,100 civilians that had been within the city, around 5,300 of them died. Provided there is the Queen's permission, Victor has already begun the organization and collection of these names of these individuals. So a monument may be erected in their honor. So that way we may never forget the names of those that died defending this place. Yes, sir. 
Absolutely, that should happen. I'm glad he's already thought of that. Yes. Very well, I will share that with him. And after the necessities of infrastructure are repaired, he assured me that it would be the next thing on his list to have accomplished. <laughs> on top of that, um, there still are the letters that arrived um, directed toward the queen and her council, whoever that may be now. Um, I think as of right now, the council is still being decided, but as a default, this is my council until further notice. Mm. Very well. There are three letters that arrived for you um, in the time that all of you have been recuperating and repairing. One from the loyalists within Vesna. One from the Order of the All-Seeing and the Crown Keepers within the city of Maester. And one from the Dwarves of Kabdar in the mountains to the northwest. If my queen would like to read them herself, or I may read them to your... And he kind of looks over everybody. Temporary council. Uh, you can read them now. I think unless people need a moment after the news, we can also just hold on to it and wait. Very well. I understand you may wish to delegate and to think on it. The letter that arrived from Vesna reads as such. We wish to inform as to the state of the city. And if the queen would be willing to offer her um, consultation and armies, Vesna would rally behind her. The crops rot. We are afflicted by the arboreal exiles. We, the Loyalists, hold the city. In fact, we are the seat of Loyalist power within the Old Kingdom. We are impressed by your political prowess. We have heard of your great deeds in Periton, and we would be most gracious to host your majesty within the walls of Vesna. Signed, the Loyalists. <clears throat> then... From the then from the city of Maester. Greetings, my queen. I write to you as Lord Commander and High Arthon of the Order of the All Seeing. I write this letter not out of desperation, but in an honest plea that you may save your people. We have fought long and hard these past 40 years to keep the walls of Maester standing. We have done that in the hope that you would return to us. We are loyal to the crown, and we are loyal to you. A hard winter is coming. The cold wind shakes every stone within our city, and the snow buries the homeless underneath it. Something is rising in the west. We hope that you will answer this call to save those who have been most loyal to you. Signed personally by Liliana Brighton, the Lord Commander and High Arthan of the Order of the All-Seeing. I cannot speak for the Loyalists within Vesna, but my Queen, I know of Liliana, Lord Commander Brighton. She is a strong-willed woman, but she is rather abrasive in most things in her life. 
if you do choose to go in either way. Arriving in Vesna first, she may seem as a, see as a sign of disrespect. But the loyalist being ever proud, if you go to Maester first, will also see that as a sign of disrespect. It is a difficult choice which one you choose between those two, but I can at least speak for Lord Commander Brighton. I've never met a more honest woman. And finally, the letter of the dwarves of the Kabdar. And he kind of um, unfurls the letter, breaks open the wax seal. And uh, he, within the letter itself, there was like a small uh, blue crystal within it that he kind of sets on the table. Uh, and he begins to read. From the canters of the forge in the northwest mountains, we hear the song the soul sings within the city of Periton. and the soul song that is sung by those who have died. Long ago, our people and the former queen stood as allies until she turned to shadow and ice. Those souls you lost may yet be returned. Break the crystal and we will come. Signed, King Borelli Boldblood, High King of the Kabdar, the Cantors of the Forge. For clarification, he doesn't mean like a crystal that was in the letter and break it and they'll show up. He meant like the crystal in the key. Uh, no, no, you can see the, the small blue crystal that that's part okay. of the letter. Okay, so it's to. like a, it's like a, like a help. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, want, I was like, wait, what does this mean? Or more like a, we'll send an envoy, you know, like the, this isn't a break in case of emergency. It's break in case <laughs> you want to talk. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I was thinking definitely break in case of emergency. I was like, well, that's very nice of them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I was going to ask, like, is this a certain amount of rounds or a certain amount of days kind of thing? Right. <laughs> you know? No, this is a, this is a break this crystal and we can talk. Okay. Cool. But they're not going to send uh, an envoy all the way from those mountains um, just on a whim. Just break okay, it right cool. now. <laughs> we could. We break it and then they get there like, oh, we just wanted to see what was happening. Can we have another crystal, please? <laughs> this is just a test. <laughs> Illithor <laughs> drops the crystal and it breaks on the ground. Oh my god. Well, hopefully that um, wasn't important. Was real. <laughs> so technically, so like, we didn't actually break the crystal ourselves. He dropped it. So like, can we get another, can we get a refund? Like, yeah. You know, so Bianca one? will, after he's done reading them, she'll kind of like reach her hand out to like, um, take them so like everyone can like look over them um if there was anything they wanted to like double check and she'll say thank you um well this is good i think some hard decisions but i think this is good this is progress um we we will need to look over all of this and make a decision but uh it it makes me feel hopeful at the very least so well, I will leave my queen and the um, her companions for the time being. If you should need anything, I'm always at your service. Appreciate you. Thank you. I'll nod, and he will uh, head off um, back into the city uh, in case there's anybody that needs his help. I know we all probably want to get out in the city and continue um, helping as soon as possible, 
Um, and I know this stuff isn't as fun or noble, but I fear putting off these conversations um, won't be good. Uh, if we want time to kind of think this over individually, that is fine. I know no one's officially a part of the council, so if no one wants to be a part of these decisions. I think this is a good taste of kind of what what will be expected of us. Um, I'm open to having a conversation now about these, though, if everyone else is, where we can do our do what we originally were planning for the day and kind of revisit this later how are we feeling so i just have a question uh joe is it possible for you to post what these letters said yes us? yes um because there was one that's that was from the loyalists that said that their crops right that mm -hmm. had been afflicted with something um yes. and then the other one was from the high commander who was saying like something was preparing to come out of the ground is that the second one uh, um it, it gave me uh game of thrones winter's coming vibes yeah i don't know how metaphorical or literal the like emergence of danger was but you know right there's a threat right right there's a big magical threat coming yeah, I'll post those in just a second. <clears throat> okay. The first one was um, saying crops are rotting. They think they're being affected by the arboreal exiles. Uh, the loyalists wrote it. They're the seat of power. If you help us, you'll have all of the, the money and uh, uh, political sway that we have. Um, the one from Maester was saying that um, there has been something afflicting the city of Maester for a while. Um and that there is a, a hard winter that is coming because there is a cold wind that shakes every stone within the city. Um, the snow that buries the homeless underneath it. Um, How close is Maester to uh, Damaris Keep? Uh, incredibly close, actually. Uh, In fact, it is the closest city aside so, from uh, Fort Ivar. So it's that winter that is coming. Yeah. It it's also a... said that it was coming from the west directly, though, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yeah. Isn't I don't know. Do we have the map? Yeah, it's right here. Activate. The keep is in the farthest west point, from what I remember. Yeah. Oh. oh, look at that. Where? Oh shit! Hold on, I was on the wrong screen. That's the cube. That's it. Well, so they've changed their pinging thing, and it's terrifying. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, so they're about they're they're gonna they're getting they're getting this little windy winter shit. They're yeah. about to. Mm. Uh, that sounds also quite so. Close. Wait, on hold road, on. I guess. So uh, these people, oh, man, these people are gonna be irritated with this if we don't go to either or. But like Vesna is on the way to Maester, so like we could also go around. <laughs> yeah, there's that's a true. To go around, it's scar. Well, if we are talking about it, we could, so, even though the lady would kind of be upset if we go to Vesna first, I feel like we could, like, do both still and, like, hit Vesna, then go to Maester. I can't tell how quick the thing in Maester is going to be affecting it. Like, the information was a little vague as far as, like, time. Uh, it's also talking about, like, oncoming, like, chilled, like, winter shit as well, right? That was yeah. part of it. I think... We're also heading into, like, summer to the calendar. So whatever the shit's hitting Maester is not going to be great. No, yeah. I think, like, the stuff that's hitting Maester, like, is as we said, like, directly influenced from, like, Damaris Keep. So it's not just going to be cold. It's going to be, like, whatever else Ivana's, like, shadowy. That's why I was like, it feels like winter's coming. Like, the, what is that? The ice zombies 
I mean, the I don't White think walkers. that's exactly. White Walkers. It's like giving me that vibe. Like, yeah. Um, so that might just be more important to get to and stay there a longer time and try and handle the Vesna thing kind of like with a third party because we know the Arboreal Exiles. Yeah, I was going to say, like, obviously, I wouldn't be surprised there's going to be shenanigans there, but, um, you know, we're on good terms with the Arboreals here. If we're able to, like, you know, if they're in, like, communication with one another or whatever, yeah. um, and get something sent down there, so it's like we're not abandoning Vesna, like, they're going to get pissy at the fact that we're not going down there personally, right. like, that's their business. Um, and I feel like... But I think that's a reasonable thing, because we, we don't have yeah. anyone in Maester. No. And Mace is like on the frontier. And Could we also, sorry, go ahead. Please. I was just gonna say we also have Suni, who's like so connected to like the Earth that I feel like, in a way, we could resolve that if we don't handle it first in some way. Like I feel like he, his influence, his connection with not just like, um, Elowen, but also like our connection with the Arboreal Exiles. Like I feel like we have a bigger like advantage to rebuild that connection because of those things or at least solve that issue from a distance while like with me like like Gemma said like we have no like <laughs> we're like there's I yeah because it's like Wait, it's, so... it's from the all seeing which like we have like right. a little bit of connection to but it's just like yeah so Vesna That's... is afflicted by the arboreal exiles that's what they think but their yeah, crops something are tells me rotting. it's not <laughs> But, I also yeah. am like, I don't know if it actually is them, but they're blaming. Yeah, killing of crops doesn't really seem like an arboreal's thing to do. Right. Yeah, but how how are we going to use the arboreals that we already know to, like, send over there and be like, hey, you fix this? Because the loyalists there obviously do not like the arboreal exiles because they think they're fucking up the crops. We might have to just like, make a deal with them and be like, look, we know they're pieces of shit, but this really needs to be solved. And if you're as passionate about the earth... You need to go help the earth and we will give you something in return for your work in Vesna, I guess is what I'm thinking. I will also say got... if it's Sorry. like if it's a thing that like they're thinking that the Aborolists are fucking it up, um, and we send Aborolists that are going from like I guess as a part from us, like, you know, as our advice and whatever, like carrying our word essentially. That will at least, like, because I don't think it's the Aborolists that would be fucking things up. Or if it is, then the Aborolists we know who, like, you know, will hopefully be supporting our, like, stance and things and wanting, you know, cities not to be ruined, um, mm. will be able to do things there. Like, if it is from the Aborolists. If it's not, then it's a thing of just, like, okay, well, these people have come here from our word. They're also Aborolists. There's something that's gone wrong here. And whatever this, like, unknown threat that's actually afflicting, like, the place like, the two, instead of going at each other's necks, can kind of focus outwards <coughs> and get another periton. Mm -hmm. So, question. How much of everything we just said was said in character? Because Cecily would reach none of these conclusions on her own. <laughs> I just um, want to throw that out I feel there. like since Ajax we're talking about it, we decided in character to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's my... That's Unless someone's like, no, I really don't want to talk about this and care. Like, feels very <laughs> passionate about that. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah. We can switch to in character. We can. Yeah. Now, that, now that we all know what we're talking about. Right. What, one quick question. The loyalists are the people who don't believe that Bianca is... Well, that there's a return of the queen, you know? Yeah, they're loyalist uh, to the plutocracy of Bella Clara. Right. Right. The so crown these people are quite. Are loyal to the crown. Right. But the loyalists. The loyalists and the loyalists. Yeah. So basically, these people just want our help because we're the best thing for them at the current time. They don't actually really care. They're just like, yeah, if you can help us, sure, we'll give, we'll help you out. But, well, but it's a, it's a chance to change their mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yes, basically, like, they they see how the political, like, landscape is going, and they're like, we gotta hop on this train. 
Question, how big is Maester going? compared to Vesna? Well, it looks like Maester's huge. Yeah, it's on the map, yeah. Yeah, Maester, Maester's huge. Um, Vesna is probably, it's the thing is, is Vesna is a long, wide city. Uh, because it encompasses a lot of those farming lands. So there's like an inner city to Vesna, but the inner city of Vesna is smaller than Periton. But the total population of the township of Vesna is yeah. larger than Periton. But Maester is like a three-tiered city that has a canal running through it. That is like massive. So you could also take like a boat the, to Maester. Like Bossing say. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like bossing um, same. Uh, oh, wow. Ajax is going to say not that big though. Definitely not that big. Yeah. <laughs> bossing say is the size of Bella Clara. <laughs> like honestly. I was like, yeah. I'm just talking about the, the tears. Yeah, yeah. No, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> um, I think that if we could figure out some way to send aid to Vesna while traveling to Maester, which I believe is the more immediate threat. That would... We would possibly be able to get supplies for Periton from Vesna. It is a large farming city. They might be able to supply some stuff to Periton if we can help them. Mm. That's actually not a bad idea, because another thing I was thinking is not just sending um, the arboreal exiles that are here by themselves, but maybe sending a loyalist representative with them. And if it's going to be a trip like that, where we need to bring stuff back, I didn't want to take away... Um, I can't... Felicity cannot remember his name. The loyalist guy Victor. that we... Victor. She's like, I didn't want to take away Victor from for such a long time because he's clearly doing good work here in Periton, but maybe everything would be smoothed over better and and we could get some supplies and build that connection like you were talking about. If Victor could like vouch for the Arboreal Exiles when they come, instead of just being like, hey, you know, like if we, we can get the Arboreal Exiles most likely to like, you know, work with us by like, bargaining a little bit but sending them to Vesna when clearly like the loyalists are not asking for that might be a little ouchy at first and we might cause a problem at least initially but maybe Victor could smooth that over get some supplies for Periton and not be gone too long maybe we could also send um I forget their name every single time. What was the Dragonborn's Me? name that the Kaladon? First... Kaladon? I think yeah. So. Um, maybe we can send Kaladon and his group as well to head over there if mm. they have anything they need to fight. Does anybody know anything about these dwarves? Because I feel like our best bet is going to be to figure out who they are, what people think of them, and then see where they're willing to help I think you're right though we can't lift all this on our own we're, we're gonna have to send some people around the well, question is do they go to the Vesna or do they come with us what I'm hoping I don't would anyone Bianca know about these dwarves like anything would Ajax know anything about the dwarves honestly wouldn't <laughs> Ooh, I know that. Um, yeah, Ajax, you can say no. Bianca, and Carissa can make history checks. Carissa, <laughs> what was that? Is your new name now? Carissa, Carissa. Sorry, what was the check? I was too fucking roll. okay. History, I could That's see. a good roll. <laughs> My I'll be back. I don't know if it's rolling in Foundry. And my highest no, skill no. is Carissa. Got a one, my dude. I am mine. <laughs> Travel icon. I got a 22. Oh, 22. I got the 24. <laughs> Natural Actually, wait, one that plus that one. So I got a two. Yeah, 24. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you got a negative eight, but that's fine. <laughs> wait, no, that's not how math works at all. I'm dumb. That's not a 19. That's a 16. Uh, so that's a 21. Okay. 22. 
say I got a negative eight? Yeah, it's minus ten on the natural ones. What's the negative nine, actually? Negative nine. Oh. What yeah. the fuck? Uh, oh, I like that rule. <laughs> lost knowledge. Feels bad. <laughs> I got real dumb real quick. <laughs> Ajax, your your big toe, your cracked nail on your cat foot hurts. <laughs> oh, uh, it really hurts. <laughs> your flat yeah. nail on top He's, of the fur. He falls down <laughs> oh. and just grabs his knee and starts, ah, ah, <laughs> Peter Griffin style. So hard, you hurt your shin. Yep. <laughs> he just. Sorry for being disrupted. Uh, no, you're good. So Bianca and Carasilla. You don't know much. Um, I would say Bianca being a native to Bella Clara specifically. You, you good, John? Have your back. Let's take care of his cat toe. Oh, yeah. You got to do that periodically. One more person mentioned the cat toe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Carasilla, you've heard the name before. And you've heard the term Cantors of the Forge, uh, mainly just from markets that were within Bella Clara, or not Bella Clara, uh, Bromsgrove, weapons that had been sold by far traveling merchants. Um, but it was really just used as a way to sell an item, you know, to make it sound more rare and exotic, you know, uh, the, this ax made by the Kabdar of the Mazdrum Mountains. Some would be like, oh, yeah, sure, give me that. Uh, but that's about as far as your history goes of it. Bianca, being a native to this area, I would say that you have a little bit more knowledge um, where you know that there are certain groups of uh, certain races that subcultures of races, I should say, that choose to live excommunicated from the rest of the world in a way where they have not been party to this intermingling of races where instead of having the shared culture that all races have um, within any given society like Bella Clara, how there can be, you know, there can be an elf, a human and a dwarf who all share the same cultural identity and their race doesn't define them almost at all. Um, the dwarves of the Mazra mountains, the Kabdar uh, are the opposite they are staunch believers in their way. They don't force that way on anybody else, but uh, they do not leave their mountains almost ever. Um, they are known for exquisitely made um, weapons and armor, but, and I would say this is kind of the thing that you know is that one of the reasons why people don't really talk about them is because they're they're kind of kind of necromancers um but in the way where it is embedded into their culture where they have discovered a way to take souls whether it be the souls of great warriors from their society or uh, great clerics great in individuals and reduce their essence into something that can be mixed with ore and metal and forged into weapons and armor. Um, That's thick as fuck. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, um, give me Skyrim be, vibes. I gotta type it just to make sure everyone knows. <laughs> it's giving me Skyrim vibes. We need us, you know, we need your little gems to power up your weapons again. The soul stones, yeah. <laughs> Um, so you know that much and Carasilla, you and, um, uh, Bianca together, you now realize that maybe why those weapons may have been so valuable. Um, and on top of that, it seems as though while they like their culture to remain isolated to that mountain or that mountain range, I should say, it seems as though they're okay with participating in outside activities if it's advantageous for them. Only makes sense. Um, but in terms of their ideology, their political beliefs, how they feel about the queen or the plutocracy, anything like that, you're not super sure. Aside from the fact that in their letter, they said that in previous years, um, long ago, they did, they were allied with the queen, um, the last queen, 
uh, until she turned to shadow and snow. So, there you go. Um, Shadows have no souls, so. After Bianca and Carousel are done, like, explaining that, um, Bianca will say, I, while depending on what they want to do, their help in Vesna and Periton would be very great. I'm more worried about us not being strong enough in Maester with the amount of tra tragedies is not the word, but lives lost casualties. here in Periton. Casualties. Right. Thank you, God. <clears throat> um, so we need more people willing to fight and not just whoever can pick up a weapon last minute. We need to have a prepared attack on Maester and knowing that they, you know, do create good weapons. I mean, even at bare minimum, they, they arm us. We know they'd be reliable, good weapons. So... Again, wherever they can help will be great, but I am going to hope that they can help us in Maester. Maester does seem to be the most immediate threat. It seems that Vesna itself is not immediate, but in over time. I wouldn't use this crystal that we were given to send them to Vesna. I think you're right, Bianca. We should use them to help us at Maester. Do we know whereabouts in the mountains the dwarves are? Yes. Are they at that little castle mm -hmm. thing on the map? No. Is that their little castle oh. thing? No? Okay. No. They're that... hiding. Yeah, I didn't want to assume, you know. They're fucking off the map. That suck. Because <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, it's like if they're close to Maester. Uh, think. no, they are in the mountains to the northwest, so they are not on the map. Northwest, yeah, okay. Okay. Shit. Right. So they would travel probably down that river to get to Maester, right? If they wanted to travel by river, I guess, but that'd be the fastest. I mean, well, to I'm be honest. I'm also asking how long, like, roughly, like espers would it? be for the dwarves to get the maester like are we talking like weeks or uh using normal methods of travel uh traversing through the mountains down the river probably two and a half weeks okay. i would uh as as a ajax would probably not be the smart but as a player uh they have necromantic magic, so they might not just be using normal means of travel, potentially. That is my yeah. thought. They, yeah. It'd be really cool if they had undead necromantic dragons. That's all I'm saying. But... <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, they're also dwarves that know the mountains really well. Like, I'm sure they'll be able to, like, traverse through that. Yeah. What, what, if, they, most. what if they have, like, drills, like the Underminer from Incredible? I was thinking so that, that too. I was down. like, or they have little holes that go underwear, under yeah, everywhere. Under everywhere, yeah. Or, I mean, they have magic, and just because it's necromantic, I mean, they could just be able to teleport themselves they places they could yeah. just be like all a, right we're here now my point in this line of questioning though is yeah. do we because i don't know because if it's gonna be whatever this looming threat is i'm also wondering if it might be better to wait till we get to mace to be able to better assess it if we need the dwarves there because i'm also oh, thinking we're I gonna agree. have to head into the keep and it's like i don't know if this is a one-time offer for their help or anything but the crystal is to talk yeah, yeah. i, I, I want to i want to stress that like true, yeah you don't break the crystal when you need their help this is like we're gonna send yeah, a yeah, delegate okay. to talk to you and then from there yeah, we'll determine if we want to for us then yeah no that, yeah, that yeah. i mean i yeah we could just talk to them see what they can even offer see what they want from us and then we can go from there but i just wanted bianca to be like look best not we gotta deal with that but like maester makes me anxious so also you were talking about needing more people to fight i mean maester is a massive city and mm -hmm. we're in contact with 
what who is it the the com the lord commander mm -hmm. uh right. so so that's seems also the, like they're the person, preparing to fight something yeah it's also the person who's in charge of all the uh military right the jedi yeah which yeah. is really great <laughs> however uh, we don't know what's in damaris keep so I'll be does joe when bianca had that vision it's here did she see any like threat anything that she can grasp of like what could be behind or hiding there because yeah. like we just de <sighs> dealt with like demons like aggressive like demons and devils so it's like it's not just gonna be like an army versus an army no it would be a it'd be a real fucked up siege it would be um so uh shoot i'm trying to uh remember what that i just remember raining blood <laughs> just like, <laughs> I'm like that was enough. I don't need to remember. I remember. Were there giants? I feel like there were giants. There were. I'm just trying to remember the names. Ah, there were giants in the keep. Yeah, there yeah. were. There were oh, let's go home, guys. multiple sires of insanity. So nipple ring boy. Nah, let's just go home. Let's <laughs> there oh, were. Ring. No more there were a fucking army. <laughs> there like, were like two of them just crawling around in the halls. We need to bring in like we cannot do what we did. Yo, in imagine this though. Imagine this again. We talked to these dwarf guys. I, we're getting way off track here. I feel, but imagine we talked to these dwarf guys, right? And they're and we're like, okay, help us out. We're gonna we have to siege this place, right? There's gonna be things for. Uh, there's gonna be shit tons of souls for you guys to rend. You can turn things undead. Like, it's going to be great for you guys. There's going to be non-human, just monster shit in there for you guys to take for your own. Use it for your weapons. Use it for all your necromantic stuff. It'll be great. Help us out. Please. That's the letter we sent. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, we'll just talk to them. We crack yeah. the crystal and then someone comes and finds us. So we're all in agreement that Vesna, sorry about your luck. We're going I, I, to I think... Nacer. <laughs> Okay, two big conditions. Somebody contradict me if these are wrong. But it seems okay. like generally number one, Maester is where we're going to go and prioritize and we will be sending secondary people to Vesna. Two, step number one is to talk to the dwarves before we're able to do much. Is that well, pretty much... I think step number one is to uh, see what's happening in Maester, assess the situation, and as we're doing that, talk to the dwarves. Yeah, no, I think we get down to Maester before we talk down to the, well, talk to the dwarves, because, you know, otherwise, I guess, because I don't know, is, is the crystal, is it some kind of, because mm. we don't know if it's some kind of sending, or if it's just like a beacon of just like, we are here, come talk to us. And I then would like, go to the known suggest location, like... we at least, ignore, like, use the crystal, like, soon, so that if, if it's something, like, they need to take, like, so the person needs to, like, take the two weeks to get to us, we can meet up with them sooner than later instead of waiting two weeks. Yeah, after but my question is, is it, when we cry, when we like destroy the crystal, is it like a thing of just like they'll know where the crystal is destroyed and they'll go to that place? Or is it a thing of just like they'll I mean, know it's destroyed and they'll come look, to like find us? Look, let's just, you know, let's just fucking do this right now. Let's crack this fucking I, crystal, yeah. see what I, happens. I think Because then we're going to have to say Persian, right? Because like otherwise it's really fucking awkward. We could, well, we could somehow contact them and be like, they sent a letter to us. So some mailman knows how to send a letter. Never, wait, he's still like, going to make another Maester. week in Persian. Never mind, we're cracking the crystal now. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Yes. I want to crack it now. I'm, I'm just going to throw out there right now, even with us cracking it right now, the powers that be that want us dead have known exactly where we are the entire time we've been in the Old Kingdom. Yeah. I don't think we can show up in Maester and assess the situation and then just step away for a few days. I think we're going to get destroyed as soon as we're within proximity of that area. Like, I don't think they're going to be like, time out. <laughs> you know? but, hold on but is maester currently being sieged or is it like there's yeah, something no, coming no. uh it's, they it's felt a little quite... they got a little chilly willy so they're like because they've been fine but it's like something's no. gonna be happening that's the vibe right 
No. Uh, Mara? No, it's been said before. Oh. Maester is constantly under attack. Oh my god. Motherfucker. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. it's like, but it's like normal. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, like normal. Trump, how there's like constant sieges or whatever. Well, not constant, but you know, there's like a history of sieges and shit there. That's why they got walls and shit. Yeah, Is exactly. Is that the vibe? Yeah, like okay. they're We're constantly fine. under attack, but they're used to it now, you know? Um, it's just that, it's just that everything's always kind of shitty in Maester, but they can tell that it's getting a lot worse. And it's yeah, gonna right, get yeah. more bad. Gotcha. It's so like, there's yeah. time. Sorry, not to what? talk more about Game of Thrones, but it's like the the wall where it's like there's always something bad, but now it's really bad. That is a great example. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, no, that's yeah. no, that's no. It it is. So, okay, it, what did it, they, okay. it fits. Does Ajax. Do, two questions. Ajax. Yes. Does he know how strong the military is in Maester? Very. Sweet. Because that's uh, where the entire, the order of the all seeing, all of the Jedi stay there. My they monk boy? Your monk? No, that's no, a different no, faction. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a different one. Yeah. That. Yeah, let's call, what was his no, name? He was, he was an elf. Company of the Golden Heart. That's that <laughs> little yeah, green, that's that little green boy in there in the mountains. Right here. Oh, okay. We need to call them. Call, t what was his name? Typho? Typho. <laughs> Typhoid. I was looking at him up on speed. I was fine. Yes. I mean, you know, you got an ally there. We need to get the Golden Heart down in Maester. We need to get the dwarves down in Maester. We need to get the dragonborn people that are good fighters and Periton down in Maester. Look, Ajax will go down to them right now, the Basilisks, and be like, yeah, Yo, the you want to fight? They probably will be like, fuck yeah, yeah let's go. <laughs> yeah. What are our other... We need to, we need to contact the... Freaking Brotherhood. The mm. Dark Brotherhood? Bloody Brotherhood, but just the Brotherhood. <laughs> um, my second question. Uh, what does, does Ajax know what Maester usually gets attacked by? Is it like demons and devils and shit, or is it like random people? It's, um, typically it is a, a combination of strange fiendish creatures or undead ice monsters. Damn, so these people know how to deal with these things already. It's just there's going to be a lot more of them. So like, oh, shit, we need some help, guys. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they, 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 they've been in the shit for a minute. <laughs> yeah. It's been a Which, minute. And that's, that's kind of what I w just Ooh. was trying to say. Is we, like, we have the demon stink on us. Like, mm -hmm. bad shit follows us so i really think yeah but the Maester bad shit's is... already happening to maester right so it's like you know yeah but it's gonna get worse but, 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 it's but, already but, reached but here's the thing here's the thing pretzel. here's the thing they've already been they're already in their minds going oh it's gonna get worse so they won't link it to us because they've already been thinking it's gonna get worse well, so, what you, so what are you so what are you doing so what are you doing we're gonna crack the crystal. Carousel is gonna contact um, the Golden Hi, Heart, the company, and Typho. Typho. But we want their help. Ajax is gonna go talk to the Basilisks and no. see if they will come. And we're somehow gonna contact the Brotherhood and be like, "Look, I know you guys love an uprising. Well, here fucking is one." So can, can I can I just point one thing out? I don't think we should ask any of the fighters from Periton to come with us because the, the city already got yeah. shit on, destroyed that we're just being, we would be and like, hey, Basilisks, Basilisks, I know Periton's at shit right now and they probably need you. Come with us. Don't worry about it. Just no. don't worry about I it. I think, I think the only people from Periton is more so with the Arborealists because, you know, it's their kind of affiliation their group um that's at least accused of fucking up best not so it's just like we contact them be like hey y'all can you like contact your peeps down south right see what that's about um so suni and cecily can talk to them again right those were yeah. the people that they vibed with mm -hmm. yeah we did that last time and yeah. seeing after how that goes we can then talk to Victor and be like, supplies, help, supplies, help. 
help supplies. I want to also uh, remember, uh, remind everyone that the basilisks expect us to help them yes. take back their land. No, yeah. they got a rain check on that. Like they can, we can, we can get to that light ball, you know. Oh yeah, totally. That was a blood oath Ajax made too. Yeah, yeah well, all right, guys. I'm gonna post what we need, but disregard all my misspelling. So it looks like we're set. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely flawless transition. In the in the you know what? words in of that... Laszlo. Go go ahead. And... Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I'll say his name. His it name was Isaac. Fuck that guy. Oh Alright, Joe, what were you gonna say before that? I was gonna say, now that we have a list of things. And we're finally back in character. That seems like a great point to take our break. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, well, we'll go on break. We'll be back very, very, very shortly um, uh, to see what happens next. So thanks for watching. We'll be right back. <laughs>
I'm gonna right. like, step away in like five minutes Hello. to get my DoorDash. Sorry. That's okay. Hello, we're oh. back. Woo! All right, let's go ahead and dive back in. Picking up where we left off, our group of adventurers had started their delegation and debate as to what would be the best course of action in the coming days and weeks and potential months within the Old Kingdom to uh, return a sense of stability, not just to the Old Kingdom, but to the entirety of Bella Clara. Those steps start now. After a brief uh, conversation between Cecily and Ajax uh, in the previous night, Speaking of trauma and the tribulations of carrying that and how to properly process it to the stark contrast of the morning conversation of the dangerous political minefield they now walk into, whether to go to Vesna and help the loyalists to the plutocracy of Bella Clara in their effort to save the crops and the city from the destruction they believe is from the arboreal exiles or to head to Maester to aid the order of the all seeing and the crown keepers, those who have been loyal to the crown uh, since the plutocracy was formed and the crown fell many, many, many years ago. Or finally to break the crystal that was given to them by the uh, dwarves uh, to the Northwest. Uh, the dwarves of the mountains of Mazdram, the Kapdar they are called. They decide, party in their infinite wisdom after much hard debate and delegation, that the best course of action is to break said crystal commune or communicate and speak um, with the dwarves of Kabdar uh, at their earliest convenience and then eventually start heading towards Maester, but not before they reach out to their former allies in the hopes to rally forces behind them to help with the fighting and maester and continue pushing to Damaris Keep. So that is where we're going to go ahead and pick up. The morning conversation had finally come to a close on that decisive end. A plan to crush the crystal and hopefully summon at their earliest convenience as quick as they can possibly arrive an envoy from the mountains of Mazdrum and the kingdom of Kabdar. So, with that, I ask, who breaks the crystal? I feel like that's Bianca's call. I mean, I feel like this thing was addressed to her, kind of, like it was to the queen it's, and her council, so yeah, it makes sense that Bianca would do it. I can crush it. You can crush it? You going, yeah. Are you going to crush it? Yep. Roll a strength. Okay. Make a constitution second throw. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's a bomb! <laughs> you didn't even... First assassination attempt, and you just let it happen. That's crazy. We <laughs> uh, got um, I will be right back super quick, so sorry. Oh, that's okay. Well, I'm going to wait then, because... <laughs> oh. so, Everyone freeze on screen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to keep chewing. That was gross. <laughs> I'm not just gonna leave that spaghetti in my mouth. <laughs> Never like a full minute. Can't happen. Okay, cool. <laughs> my hand started to hurt because it was like this <laughs> scratching my shoulder <laughs> you got the claw yes. down there. wait why was your hand like this because i was i was itching at different points so i had oh. to i had to i had to get a multi-pronged attack going on up there <laughs> um yeah it's bianca firmly grasps the crystal. <laughs> Ajax just says, "Are you are you gonna crush it or?" The crystal <laughs> is fits in the center of her palm. It is <laughs> crystal shaped. <laughs> <laughs> what color is it? It is a 
Without saying blue. Pearlescent <laughs> aqua. Marine. <laughs> It is a thrumming navy. <laughs> I gotta use the word thrumming. I don't ever use that word. It, is what, that a color word? I don't think so. I yeah, typically. Yeah, really oh, okay. All right. So, Bianca, Thank you God. have the thrumming what navy crystal, <laughs> the pearlescent aqua crystal. Pearlescent aqua thrumming oh, wow. navy crystal. The is blue crystal. About? The, uh, the crystal yeah. shaped crystal. The okay. crystal shaped crystal. <laughs> it thrums with magical energy, is the phrase to use there. Um, Bianca, you hold it in the palm of your hand and you crash it. And it breaks. There is a discharge of magical energy that sounds like uh, wisping uh, breaths, these uh, shrouded whispers. I didn't realize I had a fully artist. That's amazing. Thank you. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one man show, John. God damn it. I make the sound effects, not you. I was trying to help. <laughs> and apparently Who makes Mark, Mark asked <laughs> you. <laughs> oh my God. No one asked. You stay in your corner. That was the, you with the fans, you know? I'm overwhelmed. What? Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Wait a second. Don't don't <laughs> advertise that shit here. Same channel. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, you break the crystal. <laughs> it, it discharges. I'm running out of spoons, guys. All right. I'm running out of spoons. <laughs> Mark is dead. <laughs> so you break the crystal. Cool. And Bianca, you do hear a voice within your head. A similar effect that you felt with the sending spell. Um, a voice that says, Through the catacombs we travel. We will be to Paraton soon. Well, she will relay that and she's like so i guess they'll be here I mean, soon is pretty vague but we're not leaving right away so i feel like they'll be here pretty soon i mean they said they're gonna be here through the stones does that mean like the stern stones through well, the said catacombs. catacombs oh my god i'm deaf okay <laughs> Missed a couple syllables there. But... <laughs> they have like Same mind idea. parts powered by redstone. Oh, it's too fucking some like... Ajax P. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's great art. <laughs> oh, let me post it in the chat so everybody else in the... yeah. can see it. Amazing. Yeah. Jesus oh. Christ. <laughs> I hate that. Oh, I can't post it. Hold on. It's okay. <laughs> Why it can't I post it? need to see this? the light of day. <laughs> no, it does. Uh, no, I think I think that module might be broken for me. Oh, no, yeah. Well, it's fucking dis that's dis it's called it. it's called I hate myself. I love that. <laughs> here, I think so I, I can pull it up on stream. Yeah, there you go. I can I can show just the feet on stream. Never mind. No, I can't. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> so catacombs. There you go. There's the feet. There's the feet stream. Okay, I tried to redirect. I'm sorry, everyone. You should be. Okay. You're free right. to go now. So I guess we'll be here a couple of days then. I mean, I figured we weren't just going to like, you know, come in here, ruin everything, and then be like, all right, on to the next place. I'm sorry. No, I can't even be here. <laughs> that was very, very messed up, Bianca. I can't believe you'd say that. <laughs> Okay. Let's have a little bit more gravitas to the whole situation. <laughs> okay. What Sorry, were you talking I have about to reel it in. Okay. Let's just make contact with all our allies, sort that out, and if they're still not here, then we still have the other things we talked about doing anyway, right? Still need to hold a service for Keo. Still need to do that. 
morale boosting performance with the Caracessily Duel uh, duo. So what is we do that need to plan. To take place? Well, that can happen at the gathering, but we do need to plan that as well, even though I think Victor is really handling that. Um, but I know I definitely want to go out and um, help as much as possible today. But also, I know I talked to everyone basically. Suni, I'd like to talk to you soon as well, but I just think on what I talked to you about as part of the council. Um, I'd really like to know. Can you remind me what, what position you offered Ajax? I forgot. <laughs> I offered you uh, two, actually. Fuck, you could pick really? one or the other or be both. Um, you could be Master of War and Defense or one just Master of Defense or Master of War. But she wants you to be Master of War and Defense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anyone else need a reminder? No, I'm good. No, okay. Cecily the Builder. Build. Or Grand Mage, <laughs> you know. Nah. She don't read scrolls. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ajax will say, um, once we all adjourn here, Mm -hmm. I don't do politics stuff. I don't know if that was actually the right word, but... None of us really do politics here, so... Mm. Um, Bianca, I would I would like to talk to you before you leave. Sure. Do we all just want to then start those tasks? We have quite a big list for everybody, just of what they need, need or want to do, so unless there's anything else, I'm good. Oh, and before I go talk to the Arboreals with Suni, um, I've thought about the offer, and I'm kind of in Ajax's boat. I don't know shit about politics, but if you're okay with it, Queen, I think... I might want to go talk to Victor about how they're handling shelter here. I want to know if he has an actual plan that's going to work or just some bullshit Bella Clara initiative that's going to throw everybody together in a crumpled old house. Well, I definitely would be more than okay with that and i'm sure he'd be happy to talk to the master builder about any plans that hopefully he may have okay well I, she's smiling I guess for the time being we'll say that's my title then <laughs> figure it out after that conversation we'll see how it goes <laughs> i might hate it who knows Anything else from anyone? While we're all together? I That was Felicity. Okay. That was Bianca. <laughs> <clears throat> then, yeah, she'll get up and like step away kind of with Ajax wherever he wanted to talk. Is everyone else heading out? Yep. Cecily's good to go. Carousella? Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking, because, like, she's super just sending a message, so she, she doesn't really need to go anywhere. She can just do it, like, right now. Um, but we're still early in the morning, um, and so I think after she sent um, the message off to uh, Taco. She's gonna do a little bit of. Uh, she's gonna go out in town for a little bit, but then um, we'll try and catch back with Ajax later. But not right now. He can go off do his things. Everyone get their shit done before, you know, other things happen.
Okay, cool. So then um, Cecily and Carousilla and uh, Suni leave. Cecily and Suni heading towards the Arboreal Exiles, current moment. Um, and Carousilla heading out into the town to uh, do the bard gleeman thing. <laughs> Just try and help out where she can. <clears throat> And that leaves Carousilla and Ajax. You mean Bianca? Or, yeah, sorry. Bianca and Ajax in the meeting room. You can you can see that Ajax is kind of like... I, I feel like there's like an awkward moment where there's no talking. And you can tell that Ajax is trying to muster up talking. Um... And he, without, like, making eye contact at you, says, Um, how are you? Um, I'm in the weirdest way. Okay. You know, keeping busy, having something, a goal, really helps when you don't know how to process something, anything. And in the weirdest way, there's comfort in not being the only one who's going through a hard time. Not that I'm glad other people are suffering, especially my friends, but it's a lot easier burden to carry when you know you're not alone. Yeah. Um. I. <clears throat> I need to apologize. Um. Yesterday you asked me if I was fine. And I said yes, and I lied, and kind of brushed it off, and and I I know that everyone's going through things right now. Um, I just wanted to say I'm sorry, for not being honest. That's okay. It's really hard to be vulnerable, especially when <laughs> we have been physically. It's harder to be vulnerable emotionally. I'm not the best at it. <laughs> but I, I've known you a long time, Ajax. You've gone through a lot, and I've seen you go through a lot. It feels like you're carrying something more. Or maybe it was like the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't know. But you're... You feel... A little different than before I went into that tower. I don't know what happened. And it's okay if you don't want to talk about it. I don't, but I should. Wise person told me that if I lock away the bad thing, I won't have anything, any room for good ones. It's good advice. Very good advice. I just feel like I said before, everyone's going through something right now. So why should I burden them with what I'm feeling when they're already dealing with so much? What would you say to me if I said those words to you right now? I would say, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm here to listen. 
and you can tell me anything. You are incredibly strong and you have been my protector for a long time. And I learned how to be a protector from you. If you need to lean on me or any of us, we are all capable of holding you up. Just give us the chance. I <clears throat> feel lost. I've been fighting my whole life. And when I think back to all the fighting, I don't count many wins. I don't know, I don't feel strong. I don't feel powerful. I, I don't feel like a protector. I feel at this point more like a burden. won't deny that I to some degree I think I understand what you mean it's really easy to focus on all the things you've done wrong and I'm not going to lie, I definitely have been victim to that a lot. Not just recently, but everything leading up to now, since I left, honestly, since I left Belka. It's... It's unfortunately about your perspective, I think, because I could sit here and think of everything I've done wrong, again, since I left Belka, which is a lot, all the way leading up to losing Poe. I know he's not dead, but he's not here. Losing Ashima, who is dead, but reincarnated. Losing Cecily, who's here, but should have never died. Losing my mom. And losing Kyothi. And I don't think they're coming back. And in a weird way, I feel like... I pushed everyone here. They were just kids. And Ashima just wanted to help out a friend. And I wanted to... Uncover secrets about my past. And they came with me. I don't... I do remember why. But I don't know why. If that makes sense. But that's not the point. The point is, it's really easy to think about all my fuck-ups. And I all I wanted to be was a protector as well. But then you think about maybe what all their lives would be like if you weren't there to protect them. I know what mine would be like if you weren't there to protect me multiple times. 
life's never going to be perfect no matter how much you protect and hold on and try to never let go. So savor the moments when they are good. Because that's what you're doing it for. Or at least that's what I'm doing it for. I want my mom back so bad. I want Kyothi back. And I remember when Cecily's lifeless body was there, I was not ready to let go. But you can't always do that. We can't control everything, no matter how much we want to protect and rescue and save the people we love. You, I, I mean, I'm not going to speak for everybody. I'm going to speak for myself. You have really impacted my life. There is no way I would be right here right now if you weren't a part of my life. A protector. It's been, Ajax, you're more than just a friend, you're a gift. And I'm really sorry you're feeling directionless. And I hope you can find it because you're an incredible person. And I know your life doesn't have a lot maybe on paper that shows the kind of person you are. But I know. So glad that I ran into you all. <clears throat> I'm glad that I've been able to <clears throat> assist the future queen or now queen. I am I will continue to try to find some direction I will continue to protect like I always have As long as you'll have me. <clears throat> it's not even a question at this point. Yanka, something happened when he went into the tower after Issen. Something happened. <clears throat> Which is why I I think shook me up the most. When I was on my way to Periton, I ran into a woman named Jessica. I believe I told you of her. Yeah, I remember. She sacrificed herself for me. But in the battle, she returned and she wasn't Jessica anymore. She was a servant of Isin or 
darkness and she did something to me it consumed my mind my being and I attacked Carasilla. which is already horrible, but it wasn't just with a weapon. I was forced to claw at her and bite her. I almost killed her and I couldn't stop myself. Yucca has like a face of like connecting the dots. Um, especially like seeing Carousel's like battle scars, like clearly having bites on them and understanding a little bit more about the energy that had been around uh since then. She will put a hand on Ajax's. Are you afraid that you are capable of that? Because you know that that wasn't you. I know that, but I'm scared that it'll happen again. I've never had anyone use, I've never had that happen. And what if next time it's Cecily, or Zuni, or, or you, and what if next time I actually do kill you? I'm not going to pretend that I know this feeling that you're going through. What I can tell you is I'm not afraid of you despite this knowledge. Despite the possibility that this could happen again to any of us. That, whatever she did wasn't because it was special that you were there. This is something that she clearly knows how to manipulate people's, I don't know, instincts. It could have been anybody. It could have no. been Suni. It could have been Carousella. It could have been Cecily. She could have chosen anybody. All right, but she chose me. I don't mean to downplay what you said. I'm just scared, is all. No, I understand, and I don't mean to downplay what you're feeling. You're not. It's. it's like I said, it's nothing I could really fathom. The closest thing I could even relate to it was my fear 
of becoming whatever Isin wanted me to become. That was always a worry of mine, especially bringing these people, my family, so near everything into danger. I don't have all the answers, unfortunately. This is something you'll need to come to terms with between you and Carousel, most likely, but definitely yourself. <laughs> There's nothing to blame. And what do I even say to Carousel? Believe it or not, she's a surprisingly understanding person. <laughs> I, and just being in her presence, I think she'll know that you're trying to say something and she might pick it up for you, honestly. I do think talking with her and getting her forgiveness will help you heal, but I really think you need to forgive yourself, not just for this, but for everything you're blaming yourself for. I know you like I've said and I know what you're doing every mistake everything that you could have rewritten in your head if you had the opportunity you're tearing yourself down every time you remember it every time you roll it over in your head before you go to sleep every time you wake up when you're practicing when you're planning because you're strategic as hell. You know me very well. <clears throat> this this helped a lot. I will try to find the courage to talk to Carisilla. I'm glad um, this was helpful. More than you know. You have so much courage. You face down some of the biggest, nastiest monsters. I think you can talk to a to our Caracilla. I hope to regain some of that courage. When you, uh, have fought as long as I have, and as many battles as I have, um, You start to gain a mentality of this is your last one. And you go into battle hoping that you can protect the others. And if that if it just so happens that you are the one that falls to protect them come to terms with that. That is where I get most of my courage, is knowing that I would be protecting others, even if I should fall in battle. I think then... You need to remember that you can lean your courage on us. Even if you fall. Even if we fall, even if one of us forcibly is turned on the other, we have each other. I have courage in us that we have each other's backs. I have courage that when we face her again, 
it'll be different. And even if she uses that same trick on one of us, we'll handle it. Also, your proposal, are you sure you want me? There are others that would be better. I don't know what you mean by better, because I need people I can trust, not just people who are skillful. Ajax, your only fault is you not believing in yourself. But I trust you with my life, and if I'm going to do this, I need people I can trust, who I can lean on, who I know will be honest with me, even when it's really hard for them to be. And people who know me well, who can call me out when maybe I am making the wrong decisions. I, I don't need fear. I don't need people who are like, I mean, I do need people who are skillful, but I don't need, I don't know, some war hero from across the sea or some grand mage from a far off land. I need the people who I got through hell and back with and the past and back with. I know you weren't there for that, but that's okay. I need you guys. And I don't want anyone to feel forced into this because that's the last thing I want. But if any one of you decide that you don't want to, I'm nervous. I mean, I'm nervous regardless. I don't want to fuck this up. Oh. It's good to be nervous. To be honest. There's a lot at stake. You hold position and title. That comes with plenty of burden. And I would not like to be one of those burdens. So if it would make you feel better, then I will accept. What would make me feel better is if you accept it because you wanted it. And if you're still not sure if you want it, just give it a little bit longer and then let me know, okay? I've thought about it. I have. There's one thing that I am good at. Just one. And unfortunately, that is war. I'm willing to accept. I'd be honored to be your master of war and events. Okay. You can, I will accept under one condition. Yes. You say at least one more thing that you're good at because you're not just good at war. That was kind of a little over dramatic. Like, I love you, Ajax, but that was wow. Well, I'm good at fighting. 
Okay, well, something that maybe doesn't have to do under the umbrella of war. I'm good at jumping. Ajax, come on. You can do better than that. I'm trying. <laughs> um. Okay, you're funny. I'm... You can add that to the list. What? You're funny. You're good at making people laugh. I... I'm not trying. Well, you're unintentionally funny, which is a great trait. I'm okay at riding horses. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll just work on this. That's just something we'll work on. You saying things that you don't hate about yourself. All right, but yes, I accept. And I'm excited. Thank you. Well, now what? Well, we need to figure out how to contact the Brotherhood, and you need to figure out how to love yourself, so... Those are two pretty big things to handle. I think we got a lot I of... I have our... to do... I have to do both of those things. Well, I can do the Brotherhood thing. You've never oh. met them, so... Um... Should I, should I talk with the Basilisk at all? Oh... Yeah. That would be really nice. See how they're doing and see if they're willing to come with us. Um, I know we're going to help them later. So if they're still willing to help us right now, continue scratch of back. All right. Well, they might make me fight one of them, which honestly, I'm not opposed. And if you need me to show up to help with any leverage, just let me know. Oh, uh, it should be fine. Um, is there anything else I can do, my queen? That's Keep working weird. on loving yourself. All right. It is weird to say that. I will tell you. You don't have to call me. Like Honestly, it's kind of weird to hear it, and it makes me a little uncomfortable, so then I start saying things that are not very queen-like to kind of even things out. Okay, well, I'll call you that. Just call me Bianca. Around. Okay. You're part of the council. You don't have to call me my queen. Just Bianca. Your majesty. Bianca. BB. <laughs> Your majesty. Queen BB. <laughs> that does have a ring to it. All right. I oh, I think I need to go find Carousilla. Probably. I don't want to. I know. Do I have to? Yes. You can't ignore her forever. <laughs> I could. No. Look, I asked her to be my Grand Vizier, so she's not, hopefully if she accepts, she's not going away. All right. There you go. He slightly bows in like a satirical kind of way. Anything else, my queen? No, that will be all. Then I leave you. And he does like a little bow. And <laughs> walks a little bit. Oh, wait. And he turns around, grabs his sword and sword. attaches it to his hip. And okay, walks out. I don't want to forget that. Exactly. Um... So. Bianca will wait for him to leave because she also has to go, but it'd be awkward to be like, bye, and go the same direction. <laughs> so um, besides thinking about how she's going to contact the Brotherhood, I also wanted her to like assess like the bridge, bridge situation as well as just kind of get out in the city and um, kind of be present and helping where help can be had. Of course. Um... As the two of you depart separate directions, right? Um, you head to the areas where you needed most, Bianca, to try and fulfill some of those queenly duties and managing some of what's happening here. Um, keeping in mind that you still, according to Victor, after most problems have been dealt with, uh, that you will need to make an address to the people at some point in time um, before you leave. Knowing that um, Ajax heading towards Carousilla to have that difficult 
confrontation. Cecily and Sunni heading to speak with the arboreal exiles to hopefully have some type of successful parlay there that they may uh, help you get to the bottom of what's happening in Vesna. And then finally, Caracilla off doing her own uh, nefarious, not nefarious, plans. I'll just say plans. Um, mayhaps, maybe. Probably I don't know. Nefarious. It's okay. <laughs> hey, if it's Might the thing, nefarious. if it's the thing that Gemma asked me about. Yeah, she's planning to assassinate Jack. That's all. Okay, cool, 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 cool. cool. Yes, yeah, let's get very that nefarious. Come on. <laughs> um, but as all of you are heading out to do those things separate from one another, separate as a group, uh, that is where we're going to go ahead and end tonight's session. A little bit oh. of a, a shorter one, a smooth transition back. You know, just so that way when we play next week, we can have uh, conversations for everybody. I wanted John to cry a second. <laughs> Give John an emotional break. <laughs> um, and then probably next session, we'll see if the the dwarf show up. Go back to more trauma and making me cry. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks so much for watching, yes, everybody. <laughs> hope you enjoyed the session i know i did be sure to tune in next week for the continuation of the salamander coast or uh this saturday for the continuation of the isles of ivarion um thanks for watching and we'll see you next time <laughs>